am Jamie Awida. I'm interested in studying the relationship between athlete creativity, grit, and um, winning percentage. So a little history for you. In the field of sports psychology, there's some documentation as early as the late 1800s um, that research was conducted, but it wasn't really until post-World War II that most of the research um, began to be more applied in a sports setting to athletes. Um, coincidentally, at that same time, post-World War II, is when creativity gained value in the scientific community. They were looking at developing a way to screen Air Force pilots for creativity, and that really made it a valuable characteristic in science. Dr. Cheek sent me high, he started his work in 1964. Um, he has been critical in changing our view from creativity being an innate characteristic that an individual possesses to being more complex and having cultural components, environmental components, social components. Um, his work has been applied to a variety of settings. So that brings us to the problem space. Um, because it's relatively new to have research directly in the field of sports psychology, there's a big need for further research. Um, Santos and his team determined that need. And then in 2020, Fardia and Allen confirmed that yes, we need to look at what is sport creativity. In particular, there's not an actual universal definition of what that is. It's still being pulled from all other areas. Um, there was a study by Top and Akil in 2018, and they studied college students. Some athletes, some weren't athletes, but they were more looking for a link between creative traits and personality traits, but they weren't able to find a statistical correlation there. Um, another really important study here was a case study, and it was done on Steve Nash, a basketball player, known for being a creative individual. <laughs> Um, they found a really important element here that work ethic was an important component of his athletic creativity. So bringing those all together, we also have a little bit of a challenge there, especially when it comes to creativity, to do things in a new way. Typically we see case studies and we see um, a lot of interviews, so a lot of research is qualitative and we've gotten some research on perceptions of athletes. This challenge is to look at it more quantitatively, to start having empirical data and numbers that support some of this research. So collectively, it kind of illuminates this problem space for a quantitative study that looks at the connections between athlete creativity, grit, and their winning percentage. This is Dr. Cheek sent me high systems model creativity. Uh, it, it is kind of complex when you look at it, but the important thing here, and what he really even stresses himself, is the person's role. And so in my research, what I want to look into is that individual role and what characteristics are, are involved with the creativity component. Um, it works well in the sport atmosphere because it also incorporates the field, like where the athlete is participating, if it's um, on the track or in the pool, um, and then it has the cultural domain as well. Three themes have evolved. Uh, I mentioned that there was not a common definition, so what you see in literature is trying to take someone else's definition and use it. Uh, Memmer and Roth in 2007 defined sport creativity as the athlete's ability to make rare, flexible, and changeable decisions during the contest. So still pulling some different um, components. You see a lot of risk taking and there's multiple things uh, creativity could, could entail, but for the purpose of this sports study, that would be the definition. Um, leadership and creativity is also, there's a lot of research in that area of the coach's role in creativity, the leadership role in creativity. There's also some challenges. So we have links to intrinsic motivation, to happiness, yet creativity also is associated with, with risk and innovation, and that can actually get some pushback. Sometimes it's scary, sometimes it's that unknown. Um, in sports, you often see that that's a little bit rebellious. 
So it is not known if or to what extent there's a relationship between NCAA D1 individual sport athletes, level of creativity, grit, and winning percentage. I have three variables. Um, the instruments used for these variables, again, the top and the kill study that, that looked at college students, they use Kaufman's domain, the creativity scale. Angela Duckworth just recently in 2016 even coined this term grit. Um, so she developed a grit scale that can be used to assess it. And then winning percentage um, for athletes, you kind of look at success based on if they win. So a winning percentage is their wins over their total matches and that gives them a percentage. In, um, for the NFL, for example, if you're over 500, then you have a winning percentage. Uh, the research questions really just align, so they're looking at this relationship between the, the athlete's creativity in the winning or in percentage or their grit in the winning percentage. And then it's going to test a null hypothesis against their showing some sort of statistical significance. Finally, we have this methodology justification. So quite simply, quantitative research is looking at a model, and there's a model um, here that I'm using. Also, it is going to look at that correlation, and that is the biggest determination of why this study fits into a quantitative study. The qualitative are like the studies on Steve Nash, those ones that get really into that lived experience of the athlete, which give us tremendous value, however, we're missing the numbers. So there's a big cry for numbers, and why I have chosen to go with the quantitative approach versus qualitative. Again, in qualitative, you do not have a relationship, so it's purely based on, on what do athletes think versus trying to hear, see if there's a correlation between the different elements. The resources are really simple. So besides getting authorization, the, t the um, instruments are public access, so I have access to those instruments, so it's just kind of um, fine-tuning if I do it virtually or have a room of the athletes and some of that coordination, that's PSS software. There are not many ethical concerns, however, working with athletes can, um, you know, if they're, they're reflecting in, in a study and maybe they don't have a winning record, that might have some well-being um, component that could, could, could be harmful for them. Also, right now with COVID and just the, the the extra of being a college athlete to put one more thing on their plate could also be a little too much for them. So those are a couple of things to keep in mind. But overall, the benefits are self-exploration, identity, and confidence. Ideas for it, but 
right now with access, with feasibility, trying to make the study, it's it becomes very difficult. And since the field hasn't even developed their own definition, it is not my place right now to do that. <laughs> Question, I'm very much in sports, I play sports. You can have a talented individual who might be on a team that just stinks. Um, how, and, and that could it, you know, impact their winning percentage, but they may still have great quality. For instance, um, a gentleman was just drafted number one in the sure. NBA draft, uh, Markel Fultz, a few years ago. His, his college team had a losing record, but he was still drafted number one. How do you plan on, you know, would, would those be outliers or, or those things you're looking for in this? No, in this and research? no, that's such a good question. And that is why I decided to only focus on individual sport athletes, to take away the element gotcha. of, okay, gosh, so team, yeah, athletes. team adds so much to it. Mm -hmm. okay. And so this is really just them, yeah, how well they are performing and what it is within them. Wow. And if there is a relationship there. Tennis. Ten, yeah, tennis, golf, mm -hmm, individual sport. No, I just wanted to compliment you on one going first. It's really scary. Yeah, yeah. First one going first. <laughs> um, but I, I also want to compliment you on the transitions between your slides. You told a very good story, and you did an exceptional job of answering questions. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Yay. Good job. Right. Thank you. Good job. Oh. Well, I guess I don't get a question, but I'm <laughs> D1 schools are not all that easy. And so I know that deep down in your soul, you're thinking that because you work for you, you might have an option. I don't know that that's gonna be an issue. I, I'm afraid you might not get that. Okay. So be sure and get a plan B and C for getting right. D1 okay. athletes. And some of the, you know, there's a lot of D1 schools that are not huge, you know, they're not all Alabama. So you can, you can do a search kind of in this area for some of those people, the WAC, all those schools are relatively small. So I'm a little worried about it for okay. you, so make sure that you write Correct. in your, you know, write in your plan A, B, and C okay. regarding that. Okay. Because I think that could be just the one, and it's such a great study, I, I hope you get to do it, because okay. I mean, I, I know you'll get to do it, it's just where you get to do it. <laughs> okay, uh, great. 